William Shakespeare, born 1564. You know what? Uh, I am tired of filming against an amateur hour lockdown green screen in a tiny, boxy, echoey room. So for the first time, let's take the language files on the road. Go on location, Tom. It'll look spectacular. Yeah, maybe it will, but uh, it's also about two degrees above freezing and uh, I'm being pestered occasionally by some surprisingly aggressive swans. Anyway, Shakespeare, born in 1564 here in Stratford-upon-Avon. Shakespeare's plays and poetry have a certain rhythm and feeling to them. A French-speaking poet could not have written something that sounds like Shakespeare, because the language you speak affects the poetry and verse that it's possible for you to write. Let's start with English. English has what's called lexical stress. There's a difference in how we say the noun a contest versus the verb to contest. Stressed syllables are part of speech and poetic writing English, and if you put the stress on the wrong syllable, it sounds ridiculous. <laughs> this is not going to be one continuous take. There's going to be a lot of really difficult things for me to perform in this script, so there's going to be jump cuts. Anyway, English also has prosodic stress, which is the difference between I want that, I want that, and I want that, which are all different interpretations of the same three words. I'm not talking about that kind of stress here. I'm talking about lexical stress, the stress that's built into the words that we use. Stress isn't normally something you have to consider too much while writing, but in English poetry, where metre and timing matter, you have to be very careful with it. But I figured Shakespeare would be quite a dull demonstration to start with, so instead, how about a less highbrow bit of poetry like a limerick? Not that Shakespeare was originally just highbrow, but that's a whole separate issue. Limericks. There once was a man from... well, from where? In increasing order of rudeness, he might be from Leeds or Madras or Nantucket. But the number of syllables in those names doesn't matter. You just make sure that the one stressed syllable is in the right place, and they all sound fine. But you can't have, there once was a man from Washington. It doesn't quite sound right. The lexical stress is a little bit early. And you can't move that stress later, because it sounds worse to say, there once was a man from Washington. Now the lexical stress is wrong. For a limerick, the lexical stress has to land on the beat. Now there is a solution, there once was a man from Washington. It's a little bit clunky, there's a pause in there. Compare that to French, which doesn't have lexical stress. Just to be clear, French speakers do still stress words to emphasise them, they use prosodic stress, but that's it. In French, by default, stress lands on the last syllable of an utterance. So, this is going to be really difficult to perform, uh, I'm not going to attempt a ridiculous comedy French accent here, but if you experiment, you'll find you sound much more French when you emphasise only the last syllable. I think I got that. Anyway, that means you cannot have a limerick in French. The feeling and sound of a limerick relies on the lexical stress, and that doesn't exist in French. So why does Shakespeare sound like Shakespeare? Well, because iambic and pentameter, two words that make a fancy way to say stress every other syllable in pairs with five such pairs in every line you write. And that was Shakespeare's style. Well, usually. He didn't stick to that for every line. And if you want to sound like him, that's how. If music be the food of love, play on. The reason Shakespeare sounds like Shakespeare is he wrote in rhythm, mostly. Which is nice. But if you're translating that to French, well, the French can't do that. Yes, there are all sorts of exceptions for poetic reasons, the same as English can break its own rules sometimes. But in general, French stress sits at the end of the utterance. You can translate Romeo and Juliet's words and sentences and meanings into French, sure, but it won't sound like Shakespeare. It can't sound like Shakespeare. So instead, some translators use an equivalent French form, the Alexandrine. Twelve syllables per line, broken into two parts, and it should also rhyme, stress the end of each half. This is why poetry in translation often doesn't sound right, or even poetic, because you need to translate not just the words, but the style and the stress patterns as well. Yes, you can adapt the style, play with it a bit. English does have an Alexandrian form, but it doesn't work in quite the same way as the original French, and French does not work in iambic pentameter. Are there French poets with the same skills of wordplay and drama that Shakespeare had? Of course, but they could never sound like Will. There's more about translating texts, including Old English becoming very modern English, in my co-author Gretchen McCulloch's podcast, Lingthusiasm. There's a link on screen or in the description.